Welcome back to TTC Cars. I'm Brian. America! Yes! <laughs> That's America, um, and this is also America. This is a 2024 GT Mustang. We've been waiting to drive this for about a year. Thank you, Ford, for bringing this to the Texas fleet finally. And thank you for the surprise in the center console. We'll explain that in just a minute. This is a premium trim and it is loaded out. It comes in at $61,000. Whew, that hurts to even say that. But the good news is it comes with everything. Performance pack, mag ride, adaptive exhaust, black leather Recaros, and 486 horsepower. More on that in a minute. But the biggest thing is this is an all new generation. And by that, I mean, it's the old car with new styling. That's really what's happening here. This is completely subjective in the statement. It looks worse than the last car. I think it's less pretty, but that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments. I know people have disagreed with me a lot. I just think that this is gonna age like the SN95 Mustang did of the mid nineties. Looked like the future at the time and no one wanted it 10 years later. I think that's what's gonna happen here styling wise. Now coming around to the front, you maintain some of the staples of Mustang. You've got big honking insert grills. Think of the Mustang RTR team. This, I promise you, will glow in LED. Center pony in the middle and, oh wait, fog lights are gone. That's kind of a bummer too. I feel like that's an old school thing, but again, retro is stepping aside and we're gonna go with a different look. They're going for the future here and that's what they're trying to do. Coming up performance wise, we have a heat extractor in the hood, which is functional. Thank you Ford for not doing a faux Toyota Tacoma style fake hood scoop. I can feel the heat coming out right now. That thing works, it's meaningful. All right, coming out of the wheels and tires. These wheels are the optional wheels that come with the performance pack. Two things I gotta say. One, it looks like it belongs on a Hyundai. Um, no disrespect to Hyundai, it looks good on Hyundais. Two, I am so thankful that they're not black and you have the option to do the black style performance pack wheels or a machine style like this. I think the design looks really good. It just doesn't quite fit this particular model. Might look good on a previous gen now. Uh, that sounds weird. Braking wise, big boys. We have Brembo's, six pot at front, four pot in the rear. These are Pirelli P0s. They are just sticky enough to keep you out of the ditch. They're actually quite sticky. 255, 40, 19 in the front, 275s in the rear. It is a staggered setup from the factory. Interesting. Five-a badge on the side, so you know what you paid for it, and people will hear you coming in either way. Coming back, you'll notice this section of the roof is identical to the old car. And oh, because it is. Because it is, because <laughs> it's the old car. But that's the only shared sheet metal anywhere on this thing. So it is a full redesign on exterior design and interior design. And the chassis has been tweaked a little bit. The steering knuckles are different. We'll get into that when we talk about the ride and drive. Coming up back, you'll see the tire is just fatter in a good way. It's got more seam roller going on. And uh, look, no one cares about that. Let's talk about fuel door, Craig. We know the deal. It Ford works. knows the deal. Thank you. Capless, thank you. Simple. Oh, one more thing to point out. Read this battery here real quick. 87 plus. It makes all that power on 87 octane. Take that BMW. All right, coming up back, you've got this giant spoiler, which is- For lift off? The, look, it doesn't lift, it's flat, okay? So it's not doing anything, it's for styling. Craig and I have argued off camera for a couple years. He hates the spoiler. This spoiler existed on the previous gen car, this style of spoiler. I think it worked on that one. I think it works less here. And let me defend myself. Brian's finally come around to my way of thinking. <laughs> Dang it. This is a flat surface. Back up a little bit, show the people. This is a, no, back all the way up. This is a flat surface. The old car arced right here. This is a flat line. And then the hood looks like a workbench when you're in the cab. All right, that's too far back. Come, oh, come, too, back, oh, come okay. back, come back. Too many flat surfaces. It needs a little more curve to her. That's all I'm saying. So luckily, you can not get the spoiler. I think it works really well. Looks a lot better. Out back, you have the traditional three bar taillights. They have modernized that, but kept it. And this wedge shape, which is kind of controversial, works better in person than it does on the internet. Gotta I like say. it. Yeah, I've yeah. come around on it. Actually, quite the fan of that. Coming down low, you've got the center backup light that the previous gen car had. Super cool. I love that. And then most importantly, real exhaust tips with adaptive exhaust. Let's crank this puppy out. Oh yes, that sounds so good. Just so you know, I was toggling between quiet and loud. You can tell the sound, I know it's windy, but it's impressive. You can not wake your kids up when you go to work or be a maniac. Let's check out under the hood. All right guys, what we're all here for and the reason why you buy this thing today because it's the last V8 coupe standing from America. Good job Mustang for keeping it alive. This one has some goodies. 
Oh, look at that. Hood oh. struts from the factory. And oh yeah, let's not ignore the, this, all this. This is the fourth generation Coyote V8. This particular configuration with the performance exhaust is good for 486 horsepower, 418 foot-pounds of torque. And you'll notice it's got a big beefy strut brace and one that's hidden under this cowl as well, right there. It's triangulated and it shows. When you drive this car, it feels like it's one piece. Notable improvement from the previous generation. All that covered is paired to an MT82. I know, pour one out, but still a six-speed manual. Luckily, this comes with the 2018 and newer twin disc clutch from the factory, and it doesn't miss shifts. It actually works quite well. Before we blow away, let's check out the interior with Craig. All right, time to check out the interior of the seventh gen Mustang. First, let's get into the trunk. There's no button, Brian. No, you're an idiot. It's right there. Oh yeah, that's right. Actually, I found this out the hard way and very embarrassingly, there's a button right there. There's also a button on the actual key fob, so you can do that as well. You can just hit that twice and you're, Bob's your uncle. One thing you'll notice, Brian, that's not on here because something we'll see inside and you've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. There's not the remote start Revit thing. I'm okay with it. Which is what you want because that means it has a manual. That's exactly. what that means. So the one at Cars and Coffee doing the Red by Remote is confessing their automatic transmission. Very good. So you got room back here for camera equipment and drift cones and okay. plenty. That's all you need. Yeah, you're you're good matters. to go. All right, let's go to the back. All right, Brian, let's check out the back before I get to the front. There's a little handle on the back which is really easy to pull and then you can just push it right back to where it needs i want to move the seat a little bit because normally no one would ever sit behind brian and that's not fair okay so let's get back here because some people say well there's not any room back there no you know whatever there's actually some room back here and oh, oh is there uh, where, where's hang, it? hang on okay knee, knee room what about your head look hear me out I'm, I'm hearing i'm i'm back here and i could actually put my seatbelt on and be safe and look the seatbelt's got a stripe that's cool okay like that's worth something okay. it's extra safe and uh really what look if you're a new new parent and you don't want to give up the mustang lifestyle you actually can put a car seat back here i'm just saying that's all uh, i'm saying all joking aside i've had two children back here and it works all right brian, let's go move on to the door we get a nice padded door sill which is good because when you're in a car like this brian you're gonna do a lot of Elbow on the window. Yeah, fair. But boulevard cruising. That yeah, it has to be padded. Yeah. The actual armrest itself is padded as well. Door pull is goes through, so you lose your cell phone if you drop it in there. Be careful. But it'll, it'll catch, catch it in it a little in cubby here. down there, which yeah. won't hold any bottles except maybe a small water bottle. Get in here and Brian, this is not a bad space. These yeah. are two thousand dollar options that you should get. They're awesome. Big fan. Even some of my size, I fit in them. I'm gonna go ahead and disagree. Okay, here don't we go. get the Recaros for two reasons. One, you don't get any ball chillers or heated seats. Well, that's true. Two, if you're a really big boy or a girl, you, it might hit you in the spots uh, you don't want to get hit when you're getting in and out. Uh, might be a little snugger than you'd like. Look, I'm a big boy, and it's not um, graceful getting in and out, <laughs> but it works. And for someone like me, there's an inch more headroom. You also lose lumbar support, which this old man needs. Based mm -hmm. on look at the shirt, I'm old. And then also, Brian, there's a, that's just maybe unique to our car, but it does it make, makes a little noise the entire time. The whole time, yeah, it, it, it makes creaks. a little noise. Yeah, that's true. So other than that, though, they actually are. Yeah, great. they're great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is the big news here, Brian. Look, they are modern. Like you said, it is not retro. This is a new theme. This is a very Ford theme. Um, looks kind of like an escape down here, but anyways, um, very Ford theme. And it, you know what? It kind of works. Not no, no, you know, it doesn't work. So look, Ford has abandoned retro and they probably had to do that because they've been <sighs> retro forever with the Mustang and they've gone the way of either Hyundai Elantra or Mercedes, whatever you want to call it, or BMW, the twin screen design, which just looks like any car you've ever driven. It's boring to me, but at least it has graphics and stuff that are neat. Of the twin screen here, it could be a Mercedes or a Kia or whatever. Whatever. That's He's They're right. It, I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of boring. I don't want to say he's right. In fact, he said something really important off camera earlier. He said that this is the palette cleanser mm. the Mustang needs yeah. so they can go retro later. Yeah, and so the next generation will be that. back to normal form. They've got S95 is what it is. It's going to be the S95 Mustang of today. Okay, I gotta, let's get this thing started. Get this nice red start button, which should be a volume button. That should be <laughs> yeah. a tuning button, but that's okay. We'll start it. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, get a little heartbeat sound. It's kind of yeah. nice. Also, when you walk up at night in the exterior, I don't know if you mentioned it, but it, it does a little heartbeat with the lights, it yeah. pulses. Really cool. Look at the tar startup screen here that takes forever yeah. to load. I guess it's like Windows 95. I'm not sure what's going on here. And then, but then you immediately want to hit get a, hit this button. The pony button. The pony button, which used to be on the steering wheel. And then you got to wait for that to load. And then, okay, now you can put the exhaust you want on because we all want sport mode and track only. We would only responsibly use it on the track. That's the only place that's for. It's, yeah. it's great. Next thing, Brian, we get the beautiful, well, let's hit this button right here. It's a cluster theme. We get some options. We got, we can match the drive mode. We can go to normal. Here's normal. Actually, I, I'll be honest. I really like normal. It might be my favorite. I stayed in this the most. Yeah. It just, it just works. It's traditional and it, I, it's convenient. I like track. Show them track. Let's, uh, we're going to move on to sport. 
Sport is weird. It looks like a BMW now. Yeah. Uh, which is or, interesting because. Or a GMC truck. Oh yeah, or a GMC truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get the track mode, which is actually, that might be the most That's fun the because yeah. you can see the tack. That's all you care about. When you're hammering yeah. a turn and you're going through gears and you're at speed, all you care about is this. That's all you care about. And so that's that's pretty nice. And then we go to calm, which I don't know who does that. That's, that's like having needed in the that's spot. like having eco mode in this. Right. Like what are, what are we doing? Yeah. So and then look at this, Brian. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it's this box go. body, which this is kind of cool. It's a very unique party trick. And I wish more car, car manufacturers did this. What a great way to get back to some heritage and a throwback to your brand. This is awesome. These gauges yeah, look it's great. And the other neat thing about this, and I wish more gauges did, especially digital instrument clusters, where we can do whatever we want. At night, these go green, like the old school green yeah. backlit uh, gauges. That's really cool and fun. Let's move on to the steering wheel a little bit, Brian. I like the flat bottom. It's actually Agreed. very nice. It's a good steering wheel. It's a good, it feels right. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right in your hand. Mm okay. Okay. And then you got the cruise control over here. We've got modes, so you can change your modes, driving modes, custom, normal, sport, whatever, all that fun stuff. And then you have adaptive cruise control in a manual, and it works just right. Engage the clutch and shift gears as you're slowing down because the car in front of you is slowing down. It doesn't disengage the cruise. That's very nice. And then you got this button here. Brian and I, for the life of us, cannot figure it out. It puts this little speed indicator right here. Um, 15 is the lowest you can set it. Um, and then you can change it up or down. But then it never, it doesn't maintain any speed. I don't, we don't. It just doesn't do anything. It turns, actually, when I've used it, it turns cruise control off, even yeah. though it's green. Right. So I don't know. Maybe a program editor or we're just idiots. Yeah. Let us know we're, if you we're, know. We're probably idiots. Yeah. Um, All right. With that, Brian, that's enough. Um, we're going to wrap this sucker up and get on the road because all anyone cares about. So let's just go hit it. <laughs> all right, Brian, we're in the Mustang GT, fourth gen Coyote, seventh gen Mustang. Mustang. Hit it. Launch control. Yeah. Traction off. Yeah. Drag mode. Okay. Oh, it's feather. Let's go, 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 go. Bang the one, two. 7,200 RPM. And we're past 60, but I'm having fun anyways. Okay. Oh, 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 we're, oh we're already done. Yeah, we're done. Uh, we're okay, with me in the car. And we had a little bit of, you know, feather under the tires there, 5.23, but I have okay. a feeling you got better than that without me. 4.84 okay. is the best I saw. And I'll be honest, we do four runs. I didn't do any extra runs. I could get that to four or five, I promise you. Yeah. Uh, the problem being is that the drive modes are all so different. I'm trying they to figure are. out the best calibration. And as I change calibrations, it's changing my traction mode that I had it in. Right. And so I had a couple of bogged attempts. Yeah. So all my excuses out of the way, Easily a mid four car. Yeah. No question. No, about yeah. It. No, I agree. And somebody asked me about that. You know, what, what's the zero to sixty? Is like uh, uh, easily mid fours. Yeah. Yeah. Look, four probably four. maybe you get low fours depending on what's going on. Well, look, the the best that Motor Trend's gotten is four point four. There you go. So I'm convinced okay. four or five for yeah. sure in our in our setting. So let's let's get into it. Um, you've already talked about interior. I'm gonna get my complaints out of the way. It's not my design. We already talked about that. I don't like the cluster. Um, because it's just, there's so much going on, it takes away from the driving experience. That's why I feel that way. Yep. Now, all out of the way, <laughs> I'm so glad they make this car it's so great. Um, we've got adaptive suspension with the Mag Ride, which I think a Chevy Suburban uses that technology better than this. They're all, all the modes are so close together, it doesn't feel that different. Yeah. But it does calm down a little bit and you can save your coffee on spills there. The steering is the main driver's complaint. Mm. While the ratio is perfect, there's no problem with that. The turn-in's right like it should. There's just no communication, that's all. Yeah. And in an era when 86, Miata, SS, 1LE, Camaro, Boxsters, all these E-Pass cars get it right, Ford's just not trying hard enough. Mm. And that's that hasn't changed. They say that's better from the previous generation, it's not, it feels the same to me. Okay. Other than that, what a machine. Yeah, that said though, Brian, I think some of the improvements we got, as you mentioned it previously, the, they fixed some issues here. Right, so the MT82 is a functional transmission now. You can rush the two-three shift sometimes, and it'll it'll balk, it'll just grind going in, but it'll still do it. So it won't lock you out like other transmissions would. But but it used to be one of my biggest complaints about yeah. the oh, base GTs. I sold my last GT because of this. So yeah. Uh, in fact, I used to rail and tell you, I love this thing. I love this 5.0. I love this platform. I just wish it was a little more refined, and mainly I was talking about that. Yep. And I wish BMW made something like that. It's good enough now, though, Brian, that I think well, one, anybody can just that's not good at driving manuals or sports cars can drive this and be comfortable. Absolutely. They won't be overwhelmed. No, this not is, at all. This is very approachable. It's, yeah, Despite it's not intimidating. 486 horsepower. It works. Um, so, because those modes are aggressive enough where it keeps you from, you know, going into a crowd, like all those things. Yeah, right. So, there's that. Right, right, right. There's that. That's probably why those modes are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's easy clutch figure. I'm like, it, it works. It's refined enough now that I still prefer the trimming. But, Brian, Me too. I like this. I would get this over 
the BMW M M2, two, M4, M4, Toyota Supra. And, wow. And C8. And C8 Corvette. Yes. Okay, look, here's the deal. We had the M2 manual last year. This is just as good, if not better, the transmission was. Absolutely. So I don't want to hear the complaints that yep. it works now. Yep. Two, you just dropped a bomb saying that this is better than the Supra, which you are in love I with. I love the Supra. Right. It's just not as livable daily. This is more livable yeah. and the refinement. Take my design foibles out of this. The refinement of this interior is quite good. It's just more comfortable. It's just more comfortable. Yeah. And it works. I'm with you. The C8 is a really cool look at me car. It's not that fun to drive. This is more fun. You can roll your own gears. You can do burnouts and dumb stuff. Yeah. The C8 doesn't let you do that. No. And on that note, one thing we forgot to mention is that this manual has what feels to me like a clutch delay valve. Yeah. And if you've ever driven a V8 manual car of yesteryear, when you bank shift the one, two, you get a second gear scratch or a third gear scratch or whatever, because that shock when you dump the clutch, this has like a half second delay where it's holding fluid back in that raster. And that's a real buzzkill. That's annoying. I don't like that. Yeah. I would change that immediately if I bought this. But I get it. They're trying to make this thing last with all that power. It is what it is. And look, this car is a car I would want to track, but also and going to be, I can commute in it too. I guess yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So many of those cars, like they're good for this or that. No, this can do all of it. It's a true GT. It truly is. And the GT has always been the best GT, I think. Yep. Thank you for Ford for letting this exist because mm -hmm. Challenger and Camaro have bowed out in yep. the name of EV or not sales, which is baloney. Yeah. And, and Ford has said, no, 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 we are good at this. We're going to keep doing it. They're, and you can tell they're committed to it and they yeah. keep making it better. So, so good job. Good job. Good Ford. job. If you want one, go get one. Highly, highly recommend it. With that, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave us some comments. Let us know how wrong we are and how much better you could drive this. We know you could. Mm -hmm. um, if nothing else, maybe figure out that button on the steering wheel. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>